In this tutorial, we're going to cover basic ladder logic editing in Seascape. To get started, we're going to create a new file. Now this example will use advanced ladder logic. Seascape also supports the IEC 61131 languages, but we're not going to cover those here. So we select OK, and we have a new project. Let's get started by taking a look at the ladder logic editing area in Seascape. It's organized in columns across from A to AD, that's 30 columns, and rows down. The number of rows that you have is really just dependent on how much logic. It can be literally thousands of rows. To the left here, we have the most commonly used ladder logic elements for Boolean type logic. We also have the toolbox located here, which shows us all the different categories of ladder logic instructions. Now we're going to build a basic start stop circuit for a motor starter. This is one of the most basic elements of ladder logic and is a good way to illustrate how to build rungs in Seascape. To create a new rung, we're going to go ahead and grab a normally open contact. Now there are a number of ways to start a new rung in Seascape. One way is to drop a contact into column A. When I do that by clicking the mouse, you see a screw head appears. That represents the start of a rung of logic. It's rung number one, as you can see from the red numeral here, dropped at row number three, which you can see from the black numeral here. Now in Seascape, we can define our elements as we go, or we can draw our complete circuit and define them all later. In this example, we're going to define as we go. So I'm going to double click on this normally open contact. Remember, this contact represents our start push button. So let's say that we had a physical start button wired to the first digital input of the controller. We're going to put an address of I1 here because that is the specific input where the push button is wired. We're going to go ahead and name it on the fly. We can pre-name everything, but in this case we're going to do it as we go. You'll notice I didn't put a space there, but I used the underscore character. That's because spaces are not allowed for variable names. Okay, I now have a start push button in the form of a normally open contact. Let's grab a coil and place it somewhere out here. Now it really doesn't matter where the coil is placed as long as it's the last element in the rung. Okay, I've placed my coil and this represents our motor starter. I'll double click on it to define it. Let's say it's wired to the fifth digital output of the controller. We give it an address of Q5 and name it as before. Okay, we now have a basic circuit where a motor starter receives power when a start push button is pressed. The obvious problem with this circuit is that as soon as I let go of the start push button, the motor starter stops. So this is where we need to insert what's called a seal circuit another basic element of ladder logic. To do that, we're going to put a set of parallel contacts around the start push button using the branch tool. Now anytime we put a set of contacts in column A in parallel, we need to draw our branch elements first. Otherwise, Seascape is going to go ahead and start a new rung, which is not what we want. Okay, I placed my branch objects, then my parallel contact, now I'm going to define it. I want it to be defined to the same address as the motor starter. Now I can just type in the address of the motor starter or I can just pull it from the list. There it is right there. And the address is automatically retrieved. Okay, now when I press my start push button and the motor starter starts, the motor starter parallel contact will kick in keeping power flow around the start push button so that can be released. Alright, there's one more problem with my circuit and that is currently there's no way to stop the motor. Obviously that's not good. 
So we're going to put in a set of normally closed contacts between the start area and the coil to go ahead and allow a stop push button to stop the motor. Okay, I double click on the contacts and let's say that the stop push button is wired to the second digital input of the controller. Therefore, it would need an address of I2. Okay, now our circuit is complete. We have a start push button, which energizes a motor starter, as long as the stop push button is not pressed. A contact for the motor starter seals in the circuit so the start push button can be released, and the motor starter will continue to run until the stop push button is pressed.